Ili kwamba ni siku tende dhambi. He's talking about more than just having a Bible. Si anazungumzia zaidi ya kuwa na Biblia. I don't know if you're getting that. Sijui kama umeelewa. He's talking about just more than just carrying your Bible. Ni zaidi ya kutembea na Biblia yako. Because the word of God kwa sababu neno la Mungu is in the Bible. Liko ndani ya Biblia. Are we together? But the word of God is on the Bible itself. Get that one very well. <laughs> wow. And I said that one very well. Say, the word of God is in the Bible. Neno la Mungu liko ndani ya Biblia. But the Bible itself is not the word of God. Biblia yenyewe sio neno la Mungu. It's just a book that carries the word of God. Ni kitabu ambacho kinachukua neno la Mungu. Oh, I don't know if you get that. Sio kama inaeleweka hiyo. Lord. Now, that's why the Bible says I've sent my word. Biblia nasema nimetuma neno langu and my word healed. Na neno likawaponya. Now, when he said I've sent it, where was the word? Where's the word? Kama anasema nimetuma neno, neno likuwa wapi? That means we don't care. The word is not with us all the time. Ni kwamba neno haliko pamoja nasi kila mara. The word comes by revelation every day. Neno linakuja kupitia ufunuo. Out together. Amen. And how the revelation comes? Ufunuo unakuja namna gani? By study. Unapojifunza. So I say, meditate upon this word. Ni kusema uh, utafakari neno day and night. Usiku na mchana. Study this word. Ujifunze hili neno day and night. Usiku na mchana. Now, when you meditate upon the word, unapotafakari neno God begin to give you revelations. Mungu anaanza kupatia ufunuo. You be wondering the same scripture your mother read to you 10 years back. Utashangaa andiko ambalo mama yako alikusomea inapita miaka kumi. The same word you are reading it now. Na ile neno unalisoma leo. It comes with the healing. Inakuja na uponyaji. But 10 years back it did not heal you. Na kwa miaka ilipita kumi halikukuponya. I don't know if you are there. <laughs> now, First Corinthians, wa Korinto wa kwanza, chapter two, verse number nine and ten. Mbili kenda hadi kumi. He said, "The things that the eyes did not see." Anasema macho amba e eh, vitu ambavyo macho ikuona. The things that the ears did not hear. Masikio haya kusikia. So those are the things that God has revealed to those that love Him. Ni hayo mambo Mungu ameyafunua kwa wale ambao wampendao. And those that are called by his own purpose. Na wale ambao wameitwa kwa shabaha yake mwenyewe. Now verse number 10 says for the things the spirit of God for kwa, the spirit of God kwa roho kwa sababu roho wa Mungu searches even the deepest thought of God. Anajif, anachunguza kabisa utele wa Mungu. So that means the word of God inasema inamaanisha neno la Mungu it's a revelation. Ni ufunuo. 
It is not the Bible we carry. Sio Biblia ambayo tunatembea nayo. These just scriptures. Haya ni maandiko. I thought when you go even to how many of you have been to which doctor before before you became a child of God? Wangapi ambao walikwenda kwa kwa wafumu kabla hawajaokoka? Most which doctors they have the Bibles. Wale ambao ni wa waganga wa kienyeji au wa kulaguza wanakuwa na Biblia. Why do they have Bibles? Kwa nini wana Biblia? But they want to make you understand that what they are doing is from God. Na wanataka kuonyesha kwamba kile wanakuambia wana, wana kinatoka kupitia neno la Mungu. They want to tell you that they, they are not they are not from Satan. Wanataka kuonyesha kwamba tunafanya hapa na si tuna Biblia yeah, inatoka kwa Mungu. Even open the Bible and show you say see the Bible over there. Anakuonyesha hata na Biblia hapo. And sometimes they even go and read a scripture there. Na hapo kabisa watasoma hata andiko fulani. Some which doctors will read a scripture for you there. Wengine watakusomea andiko. How many of you have been there? Don't don't try to hide. I know some of you. Wangapi walikuwa pale? Yeah. Yeah, some of you when they are looking for girls, boys. Wengine walienda uh, pale kutafuta dawa wa mchanjo kululimi. Some of you, yeah, you wanted to to do. I don't know, wanted to become what? Some of you, when you are hiding. You ah, wengine walienda kule kabisa. Ah, mapata aku kamuzizi. Most witch doctors they have the Bible in their roots. That's more dirty. How wengine ambao ni waganga waganga au wanakuwa na Biblia. In that there are small dirty rooms we found the Bible is in there. Utaona katika le chumba chao kichafu kuna Biblia. And you also have the Bible. Na wewe pia una Biblia. So what's the difference between your Bible and the Bible of God? Na tofauti ya Biblia yako na ya na yake iko wapi? You know what's the difference? Unajua tofauti? You what's the difference? The only difference is only one. Tofauti ni moja. It's a revelation. Ni ufunuo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The only difference is the revelation. Na tofauti tu ni ufunuo. But this the witch doctor, huyu mganga wa kenyeji, is carrying the Bible. Anakuwa na Biblia. But he have no revelation about the Bible. Lakini hana ufunuo wa neno la, la Mungu. He has no revelation upon the word of God. Hana ufunuo kuhusu neno la Mungu. But the Bible says for things that the eyes did not see. Biblia nasema kwa mambo ambayo macho hayakuona. And the thing that the ears did not hear. Na vitu ambavyo masikio hayakusikia. It means it's not something physical. Sio kitu ambacho ni tunaweza tukaona na macho. The word of God is not physical I'm sorry. Neno la Mungu sio mambo ya kimwili tunaweza tukaona. The word of God is more spiritual. Lakini neno la Mungu liko kiroho zaidi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It is not more physical but it's more spiritual. Sio kimwili lakini iko zaidi kiroho. So that's why he said I have sent my word. Akasema nimechunga neno lako. I have sent my word. Nimetuma neno. And the word came to heal you. Na neno likaja kukuponya. Why was it when God sent it? Why did God send it? Hilo neno lilikuwa wapi kabla Mungu alitume? So it means we don't carry the Bible. We don't get the word of God with us. Ni kusema hatutembei na neno la Mungu pamoja na sisi. We carry the Bible. Tunatembea na Biblia lakini hatutembei na ufunuo. The revelation will always come according to the situation that we have. Ufunuo inakuja kufatana na changamoto ambazo unapitia. And when that revelation comes, na ufunuo unapokuja, that's why it comes to bring a solution into our life. Ni hapo tunapata jibu kwa lile shida. That's why it comes to bring the healing. Ni hapo inaleta uponyaji. Can I hear men in the house? Amen. I know some of you are really confused. Naona wengine hapo wamechanganyikiwa kabisa. But this year we're going a little bit more deep into things. Hii mwaka tuko naingia kutafuna mifupa kabisa. Mabonz. Because God want to see the real disciples. Mungu anataka aone mitume au wafuasi wa kweli. Jesus said those who want to be my real disciples who hold unto my teaching. Wale ambao watakuwa wafuasi wangu lazima wataangalia sana mafundisho yangu. You know how many left Jesus because of the teaching? Unajua wangapi ambao walimkimbia Yesu kwa sababu ya mafundisho yake? You know how many left him? Unajua ni wangapi walikimbia? Do you know that? Unajua hisabu yao? You know how many left the church of Jesus because of the teachings? Unajua wangapi wameacha kanisa la Kristo kwa sababu ya mafundisho? The Bible says he taught things that people could not even understand. Alifundisha vitu ambavyo watu hawakuelewa. And I said this is too tough for us. To Wakasema mm -mm, hii inatupita tuendelee. And the Bible said they left him. Na Biblia inasema wakamwacha. They did not leave him because he was bad. Hawakumwacha kwa sababu alikuwa mtu mbaya, but simply because the teachings were too tough on them. Kwa sababu mafundisho hawakuyaelewa. 
alikuwa magumu and i asked myself why did he not call them back and make it simple for them to understand ah nikajiuliza kwa nini yesu aliona sema alikimbia kwa nini yesu akowafuatilia tena afanye follow up murudie na mapatia ya teketeke Hallelujah. Amen. Why he left them go? Why he didn't just call? Kwa nini alibacha sema baende? Hakuwafuatilii. Make it simple so you can understand it. Ili kwamba kwa sema mkuye tu ni wapache bia teketeke bia buyi, mtasikia bia bia. Hakuna. Because he was looking for the real disciples. Kwa sababu alikuwa natafuta wafuasi wa kweli, halisi. And those who are not real, na wala ambao sio halisi wa kweli, it means they are fake. Wale ni watapeli and the fake ones cannot take it na watapeli hao hawachukui hiyo it's too hard for them iko ngumu mikua haleluya mifupa so this year we are focusing more on the teachings of the word of god hii mwaka tuko naangalia kabisa kwenye mafundisho ya neno la mungu and the teachings that will bring true freedom in us na hayo mafundisho italeta uhuru wa kweli ndani yetu so that we get to understand the power that is in the word of God. Hapo tutaelewa nguvu ambazo ziko ndani ya neno la Mungu. Not going around and searching the things you cannot find. Ah sio tu kuzunguka zunguruka fasi kutafuta vitu ambavyo hautapata. Otherwise you keep wasting time and you give up your faith. You keep wasting time and give up your faith. Unaendelea kupoteza muda na unatupa imani. I want us to pray shortly before we close for today. Natamani tuombe kidogo kabla tufunge. And my prayer we're going to pray that God will help us throughout this year 2022. Na maombi There is much that God in store. Yako mengi ambayo Mungu anakuwa anatuchungia. Ana I don't want you to miss. Na sipendi uweze kukosa kitu. I don't want you to miss your freedom. Sitamani kwamba ukose uhuru wako. Because everything that God brings for his children, he brings so you may have it. Yote ambayo Mungu analeta kwa ajili ya wanawake ni kwamba wewe upate hiyo. And they say if the son of God set you free you will be free indeed. Anasema ikiwa mwana wa Mungu atakuweka huru na wewe utakuwa huru kweli kweli. And I want you to see that freedom in you. Ah tunatamani kuona ile uhuru ndani yako. Let's stand up and begin to pray. Tusimame na tuanze kuomba. Open your mouth and begin to pray for yourself in Anza the name of Jesus. Na Mungu, Open father, your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because wana wana fuzi wana shikilia neno. Mangaribi ya leo Jehovah tuko hapo tulisikia neno lako. Neno linapokuja haliwezi kurudia bila kutimiza makusudi yake na mapenzi yake. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo mangaribi ya leo Baba inasema kwamba ikiwa baba ata mwana atamweka uhuru mtu huyo mtu atakuwa uhuru kweli kweli na uhuru unakuja kwa neno lako katika mwaka huu baba natamani roho nisaidie unipatie ufumo zaidi Roho mtakatifu niwezeshe mwaka huu unipatie hamu na kiu ya kusoma neno lako unipatie kiu ya neno lako unipatie njaa ya neno lako Biblia inasema hei wenye kiu na njaa neno la Mungu maana hao watashibishwa baba mangaribi ya leo katika mwaka huu natamani baba niwezeshe roho Mungu nisaidie nipatie hamu ya maneno yako nipatie hamu ya kutafuta usiku na mchana inasema medite utafakari usiku na mchana baba nipatie ability ya kutafakari neno lako nisiwe tu wa kusikia neno lakini niweke ndani ya tendo kila mara ninapohitajika katika jina la Yesu Kristo wa Nazarete maana Biblia inasema kwamba wale ambao ni wanafunzi wako ni wale ambao wanalitenda ndani ya tendo baba nisaidie kwa mwaka huu kila neno lako unisaidie bwana niweke ndani ya tendo katika jina la Yesu Kristo wa Nazarete baba natamani kutuona matendo unatamani kutuona matendo baba niwezeshe hii mwaka niwe mtu wa matendo nisiyo mtu wa kusikia tu Niwe mtu wa matendo neno lako katika jina la Yesu Kristo wa Nazareti. Jesus name. Amen. There there 
two great things that the enemy is stealing from us. Kuna kuwa vitu ambavyo adui anatuiba. And this is a greater secret that he knows. Na hii ndio siri ambayo wanajua. Number one is to study the word of God. Siri ya kwanza kujifunza neno la Mungu. The enemy try to keep us so busy. Adui anajaribu kutuweka na shughuli nyingi sana. And try to make us not to know what is written. Anajaribu kutufanya kwamba tusikwe na ufahamu. Jesus was tempted. Yesu alijaribiwa. But what saved him was the knowledge of the word of God. Kila ambacho kilimsaidia ni ufahamu wa neno la Mungu. Because Satan was telling him things according to the word. Na shetani alimwambia vitu kufuatana na neno la Mungu. And Jesus answered according to the knowledge of the word. Na Yesu alijibu kufuatana na ufahamu wa neno la Mungu. So the enemy tried to make sure we don't understand, we don't even know the word. Adui anahakikisha kwamba tusiwe na ufahamu wa neno la Mungu. Because he knows that when you know, kwa sababu anajua unapokuwa na ufahamu au unapojua, you will be free from any bondage. Utakuwa huru kwa kila kifungo. If I may ask you now when last did you read your word? Nikikuuliza mara ya mwisho ulisoma Biblia ilikuwa wakati gani? When last did you study the word of God? Ni wakati gani ulijifunza neno la Mungu? If I may ask everyone here. Nikiuliza kila mtu hapa. When last did you read even a scripture? Wani wakati gani ulisoma neno la Mungu? And you know that the devil is already stealing your light. Na unajua kwamba shetani bado anaenda kuiba vitu maisha yako. When last do you take your time even 15 minutes for your personal time and prayer? Ni wakati gani ulichukua dakika 15 kwa wewe na Mungu tu kwa kwenye maombi? Maybe the last time you prayed was the last Sunday we prayed or maybe the last Friday when we had overnight. Pengine wakati yako ya mwisho ilikuwa ni dimanche pasiri tulikuwa maombi hapa na vandredia mkesha ile ndio ilikuwa siku yako ya mwisho kuomba. You want to tell me that you can really survive after one week you no time to read the way? Utaniambia kwamba utaweza kuishi wiki yote mzima bila neno la Mungu? Because the word of God is a, is, a, is a food to our spirit. Kwa sababu neno la Mungu ni taa kwenye miguu yetu. It's a food. Ni chakula to the spirit. Juu ya roho zetu. So when your spirit is not fed, wakati roho haijazwi, it's not fed. Wakati hailishwi, ah So what happens? Nina tokea. Your spirit becomes weak. Roho inakuwa dhaifu. We don't pray. Haombi. So the power the anointing goes down. Ni kwamba uwezo upako inashuka chini. That when any time of temptation comes, any kind of wind comes, you just blow. Ndio maana kila jaribu unapofika upepo unapovuma inakupeleka. And that's, let me tell us a secret in this country that the enemy is using. Na hiyo ndiyo siri ya adui anatumia katika nchi hii. People were on fire. Watu walikuwa kwenye moto liwako wa kiroho kabisa. And the fire is being squished. Lakini moto imezimishwa. Because the enemy uses these two tools. Kwa sababu adui anatumikisha silaha hizi mbili. Make sure you don't know the word of God. Anahakikisha usikuwe na ufahamu wa neno la Mungu. Make sure you don't even have time to pray. Na anahakikisha kwamba hauna muda wa kuomba. Because you know when you don't start the word of God. Anaelewa kwamba unapokuwa na ufahamu wa neno la Mungu. Your spirit is hungry. Na roho yako itakuwa na njaa. And when the spirit is hungry. Na roho inapokuwa na njaa. He doesn't do much. Haitasonga kabisa. He doesn't do much. Haitatenda wewe kwa wingi. na kila upepo kivuma inakupeleka. And make sure you don't have time in prayer. Anahakikisha kwamba hauna muda wa maombi. Because he knows a prayer. He knows a prayer. Anajua maombi yetu. Bring the anointing, do the power. Inaleta kwamba nguvu inaleta upako. Now let me give you an example of it to understand before I close. Acha nikupatie mfano uelewe kabla tufunge. You see your battery, your, your car battery. Unaona gari yako mnakuwa battery. Hallelujah. No, that battery is in your car. Unaona hiyo battery ndani ya gari yako. Is the one that gives your car the power to function. Inapatia nguvu gari yako kufanya kazi. So without that battery you can't start your car. Bila ile battery highway gari haiwezi kuwaka. But do you know what makes what gives you the what gives the power to the battery? Unaiwa nini napatia nguvu kwa kwenye battery? 
is when you run your car to all times. Ni wakati unatembeza gari yako kila mara. See when you're going and putting your petrol. Ni wakati unapo una accelerate. You are charging the battery. Yaani uko unashargia battery. So when you spend 2 3 days without starting your car. Ukifanya siku 2 3 hawashi gari. That car will not start. Hiyo gari haiwezi kuwaka. Why? Kwa nini? Because the battery will be dead. Kwa sababu battery itakuwa imekufa. So understand these things. Understand these things. Natamani uelewe hiyo. It is the it is the battery that gives the car the power to start. Ni battery inapatia gari ya nguvu ya kwamba iwake. But when this battery is weak it cannot start. Lakini hii battery ikiwa dhaifu haiwezi gari haiwezi kuwaka hata kama unawasha. So when the car starts gari inapowaka the battery now depend on the strength of the car. Na battery inatembea na nguvu za gari. I don't feel getting these things. Sio kama unaelewa. So the more you keep putting your gas, you know what you got? Unapoendelea ku accelerate gari yako. Una accelerate una accelerate. Una accelerate una accelerate. You are empowering the battery. Yaani unapatia nguvu kwenye kwenye battery. Every time you keep putting your gas, unapo ushikilia pale kwenye accelerate accelerate. You are charging your battery. Yaani unaongeza moto kwenye battery yako. So that's how spiritual life works. Ndivyo maisha ya kiroho inavyotembea. When you pray, unapoomba, you are charging the anointing over your life. Yaani unaongeza upako juu yako. The more you become prayerless, unapokuwa mzaifu kwenye maombi, So your battery is losing the anointing is losing. Na upapo inashuka yani battery moto inaendelea inafifie inashuka chini. Now when the anointing loses na upapo inaposhuka chini. When sin comes sin can overtake you. Dhambi inapokuja itaingia kabisa. Even when you supposed to say no you not say no you say Hata kama ungesema hapana unasema say ah hii nayo boa. Acha tu nimfurahishe tu. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why in this camp is this nation where we are. Ndio maana kwa taifa hili ambao tunajikuta ndani. In every country there's a demon that is assigned. Mukila inchi kuna kuwa pepo ambaye anawekwa. But in this one. Lakini hapa the greatest demon yani majini au mapepo makubwa yale is to squinch the power of people. Ni kusema bana kuvinya moto ya maombi moto ya mambo ya Mungu ina, inaisha ndani yako if you only overcome that then you succeed in this country ukiweza ile au utaendelea maisha i've never told you this what's the first secret i'm giving you hii hiyo ni siri nakuonesha if you only overcome that one in this nation you are succeed kama unaweza tu hiyo katika nchi hii utaweza that's the only thing you don't need anything else in this country hauna haja kitu kingine katika hii nchi there's no demon of poverty <coughs> Hakuna pepo ya umaskini hapa. There's no demon of hunger. Hakuna pepo ya njala hapa. I don't want to mention all these things. Oh, ya kuharibisha manguo hakuna. No. <laughs> oh, panya zikula manguo hapo. The only demon here is to bring the, the fire of people down. Pepo iko hapa nguvu. Ni kuya na shindano wanatobola piu. Pepo inaisha yote. Unaisha na bakia mifupa. That's why you see people were prayerful when they came intercessors. Those who used to go mountains on the camp. No more mountains. Ukiona wale walitoka kunyumba walikuwa moto huku walipofika hapa. Mm, ikashuka brr. But they didn't realize the ground where they entered. Kwa sababu hawakuelewa uwanja ambao wanaingia ndani huko namna gani. When you enter any nation, any place. Unapofika mkila taifa The first thing you need to pray ask God to reveal to you what kind of demon is operating in that Ambia Mungu akufunuliwe ni pepo gani ule mkubwa ambaye anafanya kazi zaidi mambo ya kiroho So in the sense of English they call, we call them territorial demons Hao wanaitwa mapepo ambao wanatembea na mtaa au na muji We call them territorial demons Yaani hiyo ni mapepo iko territorial yani ni ya mahali pale Every territory has demons that are operating Ni kusema kila territoire iko na demo ule chini mkubwa ambaye anaangalia pale When you, you succeed on that Ukiona unafanyikiwa pale 
then you know you are moving forward hapo utajua kwamba unaendelea mbele and your life is succeeding na maisha yako itafanyikiwa i say you succeed this year in the name of jesus najua nasema utafanyikiwa katika jina la yesu you you just discover the secret you succeed this year kama jesus umejua siri utafanyikiwa katika nchi yako you succeed this year in the name of jesus utafanyikiwa hii mwaka katika jina la yesu mwaka itakuwa mwaka tofauti kwako open up and pray now for this year anza kuomba kwa jina la mwaka ili mwaka ufanyike katika hichi in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus katika jina la yesu kristo nazareti amen unasema kwamba unaujaza mwaka na mambo mazuri unaujaza mwaka na mambo mazuri katika jina la yesu kristo kama hii mwaka in the name of jesus kwa vitu atakuwa bikia Baba natangaza kufanikiwa kwa biashara Natangaza kufanikiwa ninapotoka na kuingia Natangaza kufanikiwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo wa Nazareti Hii mwaka ni mwaka yangu Ni pande misuke Hii mwaka ni mwaka yangu Nitaona makubwa ya Mungu Nitaona wema wa Mungu Nitaona upendo wa Mungu Oh katika jina la Yesu Kristo ipande lishuke shetani penda sipende na baada ya kemote nasema hii mwaka kufanyikiwa utafanyikiwa maana Biblia inasema in the name of Jesus ya Mungu ni kwamba wanapatishwa wema ili baba tukuzwe katika mwana katika jina la Yesu mwaka huu baba uende mbele yangu tangulia mbele yangu huu mwaka baba niwe juma baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo Mungu yangu angazie I say in the name of Jesus Lord in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus katika jina la Yesu Kristo any spirit that bound the life of the children of God kila pepo ambayo imefunga maisha ya watoto wa Mungu relocate at this moment in the name of Jesus nasema waachilie katika jina la Yesu I say relocate at this moment nasema waachilie kwa hii wakati katika jina la Yesu any bondage of their life kila vifungo maisha yao I say let them be free I speak freedom from heaven. Ni natangaza uhuru kutoka kwa Mungu. Freedom in their families. Uhuru katika jamii zao. Freedom in their businesses. Uhuru katika biashara yao. Freedom in their marriages. Uhuru katika ndoa zao. Mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Father, I pray that you are moving the greatness this year. Tunatangaza kwamba watapanda kwa kitu kikubwa zaidi. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. In Jesus name we pray. Katika jina la Yesu tumeomba. Mungu awabariki. Maybe seated for two minutes. Unaweza mkakaa kwa dakika mbili. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you very much for coming back again. Asante tena kwa kwa kurudia mahali hapa tena. And for starting.
that will see happiness forever. Hallelujah. Amen. That along the way he leads us. Na tunamini kwamba huu mwaka atakuwa kiongozi kwetu. And we believe that this year he's going to lead us. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. God is the spirit. Do you have the Bible? No. Okay. Mungu ni roho. God is the spirit. Na mahali alipo roho wa Mungu. And where the spirit is. Kuna kuwa uhuru. There's freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. Mungu ni roho. God is the spirit. Na mahali roho wa Mungu yupo. And where the spirit of God is. Kuna uhuru. There's freedom. Yaani kwenye Mungu iko kuna uhuru. So where uhuru. God is there's freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, kwa hii kipindi in this moment sijui kama kuna mtu tunapatia watu wawili ambao sijui kama kuna mtu ambaye ametoa atatoa ushuhuda sijui I don't know if there's anyone that has a testimony lakini hakuna mtu ameandika but no one gave us notice haleluya amen Hallelujah. Amen. Basi kwa hii kipindi and so in this moment tunakaribisha Glorious Choir karibia. We're going to welcome Glorious Choir.